Numbers 19, 11 through 13. He who touch, whoever touches a dead body is ritually unclean for seven days. This is um, also custom for any contact with a grave or any place where a dead body would have been in, at. So it's a tomb. This would have been an instance, a place where somebody died. Um, the place where they died would have made unclean until seven days they would have had to purify it. So all of this would have made the person unclean for seven days. Um, the most spiritual aspect of this is those that are lost are referred to as dead and there's a spiritual uncleanness there because we're made alive through Christ. He must get himself purified with the water of ritual purification on the third day. And on the seventh day, then he is cleansed and clean. If he is not purified both on the third day and on the seventh day, he is not clean. So the interesting thing about this is oftentimes this purifying water would not be where they lived. So they didn't have to go out to it and there's pools around the temple. There's certain places for cleaning. But the fact is for them to go this, I mean, they would have had contact with other people and they would have made made unclean. This shows that sin is spreads, but this also shows that our sin isn't just something we deal with. It affects other people. Now this is contact with dead, so it ain't really sin, but it's uncleanliness, which is a can be symbolic for sin. We can refer to it sin in that way. So, and they had the direct way to make it right. And they'd get done on the third day, and we see how contact with dead bodies could cause disease and things anyway. Um, so, you know, it gives them time, and most cases, disease wouldn't happen, but it could. So this gives them a week period to make sure they're okay. But it also shows that they have to be obedient because it's on the third day they go. Anyone who touches a dead person, that person that is the body of a person who has died and does not purify himself, defiles the tabernacle of the Lord. He is to be cut off Israel. The water of the purification has not been flung over him. He remains unclean, and his impurity is still upon him. Um, so it's saying that they weren't allowed to go to the tabernacle. This meant they weren't to partake in the sacrifices. They weren't to take part in the offerings. They were pretty much shunned because they were recognized as unclean. You know, the unclean were considered outcasts. Because of this. And not all the time was it cause of disobedience. Sometimes it's when we see them maybe unable in certain instances to make it to these pools. Because maybe they needed help. But either way they were cut off from the people because the people didn't want to become unclean. You know, sin is that way where we as Christians cut off sin for our life, but we don't cut off the people. Because we know how sin can be fixed, and we bring them to Christ. Who's in a way like the pool. You know, and oftentimes the they don't instantly become I mean there's an instant change when they come to Christ, but it takes time, you know, showing, developing a period before we know, okay, this really is genuine, that before they start bearing the fruits, just as there was a time after they went to the pool before they were considered clean. Um, so we can relate this to Christ. As we're unclean through our sin, they were unclean by contact with dead bodies and tombs. And as they were to go to the pool to be clean, we go to Christ and He takes away our sins. 